Good morning. How's everybody doing? That's it? Who wants some Nashville country music? I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't sing or play guitar, so we're not going to do that right now. And place that down. Guys, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics in marketing and in business in general is review generation. And I want to start by prefacing this by saying we have asked thousands of thousands of re- uh, professionals to get us these, these results you're going to see today, these statistics that you're going to see. So I want to start out by asking, I want you to be honest with me. How many of you currently can, are asking for reviews consistently? Show of hands. Oh, man. I knew this was going to happen. I thought we were friends, guys. Hold on. There we go. Only 13% of home service professionals are asking for reviews. 13%. Why is that? Are you guys providing good work? Are you providing good experience? Do your customers like you? Okay, then why are we asking? Why? Sorry, the clicker. But, and here's, and here's the crazy part, guys. 75% of your customers are willing to leave you a review. They want to leave you a review. 75%, that's three-fourths of your customers. It's supply and demand. The demand is there, you just gotta supply the reviews, right? So jumping into that, how many of you guys have built your business through the one-on-one referral network, like you know, one person tells another person, tells another person, tells another person. Show of hands, how many of you guys have done that? That's great. Keep doing that, keep building that way. That's how you're gonna build a stronger customer base. What? Sorry guys, clicker's been off. But, but a lot of you are missing the one-to-many ratio, whether it be Angie's List, Yellow Pages, Google, Facebook, Home Advisor, Better Business Bureau, Yelp. You're missing that one-to-one, but you can be missing one to a thousand, one to a hundred. Being on these websites, being present, will take your business to the next level. Having reviews, having people talk about your business, customers talk about your business, you'll show up more. It does a lot of good. So I get a lot of times, Chad, how do I ask? When do I ask? What's the whole process in place? First, you ensure the experience. How many of you guys ensure the experience? Good, you guys all should be raising your hands. Ruben will get into this a little bit later in his presentation, but ensuring the experience is vital in terms of asking for those reviews. What exactly do you mean by that? We'll get into a little bit, I'm gonna get into a little bit later. Then you wanna earn the right to ask. So once you ensure that experience, you create that great uh, service to your customer, go above and beyond then you have the right to ask. And then you want to send requests constantly. The key word there is constantly. Not your customers are busy. We're all busy, right? How many of you guys get review, review requests all the time? Yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. You forget about it. We all do it. Your customers do too. So send requests constantly. I apologize, guys, this clicker is acting up. Then you want to track, monitor, and respond. Like anything else you do in your business and your marketing, tracking and monitoring and responding is so vital to know what's going on. What are your customers saying about you? How do you know that? You're tracking, you're looking at it. Make it a day a week where you're looking at all of your reviews across the board. And then you want to follow up and remind. Like I said, we're all human, people people forget. So following up and reminding creates that, that issue with not having the problem with getting those reviews because you're reaching out and asking over again. Now I want you to remember, there's three R's. Request, remind, respond. Remember those three R's. Everyone say with me. Request, remind, respond. Come on. There we go. So there's four factors in the purchasing decision. You know, the customer makes that choice to go and purchase and use your service, right? So what do they do? First, they look at star rating. Most important thing, 
How many of you guys are five stars across the board? Awesome. Four stars. Three stars. No one? Two stars? One? No stars? Star rating, guys, is one of the most important things. Customers, the first thing to look at is your star rating. And then you have overall sentiment. And overall sentiment is what is your customer saying about your business? Go look at all your threads that are, that are being talked about. You can see what your customers are saying. There's keywords that are put into it. Are they genuine? They're quick. Um, they're honest. They provide good service. Those things are sentiment. Sentiment is also how you respond to your customers. Every time a customer leaves a review, you should always be responding, reaching out, and following up with them. That shows sentiment. It shows you care. And your customers want to see that, and your future customers want to see that. Recency of reviews. This is an important one. 78% of your customers think if a review is three months or older, it's no longer relevant. That's rough, right? You guys work so hard to get those reviews, so if it's three months old, they're not really going to take that too seriously. That stinks. Now, it doesn't mean don't be proud of those reviews. Those reviews are awesome. They are being used. But customers want to see relevant reviews that are as soon as possible. They want to see more and more. They want to see week, day, maybe a month. They want to see new reviews. And last but not least, frequency of reviews. This is very important. I ask this question every single mastermind. There's a secret number that you have to have in, on all your websites, whether it be Google, Facebook, Yelp, a certain number of reviews. Can anybody guess that number? Shout it out. Anybody else? The number is 34. Walter Payton, that's how you remember it. Walter Payton, 34. Always remember that. You need to have at least 34 reviews on Facebook, Yelp, Google, and Jesus, any of these places you want to become, or else your customers don't think that you're legit, we'll say, for lack of a better term. So make sure you have that. So why is this, all, why is this so important? Why are reviews so vital for your marketing, for your business? I'll tell you why. In a second, when this thing loads. It's a cute dog. 90% of consumers trust reviews over anything else that you do in your sales and marketing. That's crazy. Does that shock anybody? 90% of your customers think that reviews are more important than anything else you do. You know why? Because other people are talking about your business. It's honest feedback, hopefully honest feedback. It's so important. And not only does it affect that? It affects SEO. How many of you guys spend $100 on SEO? How many spend in the thousands on SEO? Yeah, it's expensive. Let me tell you, reviews can help with that. Online reviews affect local search by 12%. Woo, that's a big number. You can cut your spend on, on SEO if you get more reviews because Google wants to get the best local search for that customer. And if you have good reviews in your local area, you're showing up higher, Google loves that. That's 12%, that's a huge, huge chunk. If you guys anybody know, anybody knows about Google, it's a huge chunk. Also, updated reviews on your website increase your ranking. So how many of you guys currently have your reviews being funneled to your website? Awesome, keep that going. If you don't do that, have, it, have that do that, because it's really good for your business. Google loves relevant new content, and that's what it pushes. So pushing reviews to your site that are updated monthly, weekly, is going to really help you out in SEO. Let's go. 95% of people only view the first page on search engines. It's like, I haven't looked at the second page of Google since Bill Clinton was president, no joke. It's like Bed Bath & Beyond. You don't go to the Beyond section. You stay away, right? That one kind of died. You guys are killing me today. So what if I don't have any reviews? Go get some, plain and simple. 59% of consumers look at two to three review sites before they make a purchasing decision about your business. Okay, I wanted to buy a TV recently. What was the first thing I did? Anybody? No, I asked my wife first if I could buy it, okay? 
But then what I did is I went to different sites. I went to Google, I went to Amazon, I went to Best Buy, and I looked at all those reviews. And guess what? I found the right TV. My wife said it was a little too big, but I liked it. 87% of people say that a business needs a rating of three to five stars before the analyst will do business with them. Three to five stars. I will say you need to be at four to five. The perfect, the perfect star rating is a 4.5. I would love for all of you guys to have a 4.5 rating across the board. I'll tell you why in a second. When should I ask? <laughs> it's a tough one. So I had our analytics team put together a really complicated graph. It took them hours. Oh, perfect. You want to ask when your customer is most excited. Right, is that happy smiley face in the corner? They're happy, they want to leave you a review. Well, why are they, why are they happy? Because it's the more relevant times that they purchase. It, it was right after they purchased, they're willing to leave that review. That sweet spot right there is when they're gonna get you that review. I had a carpet cleaner come in. I have two dogs, they run around, they make messes, it's crazy. But anyways, a carpet cleaner came in, did an okay job, the experience was eh, I would say, very mediocre, was very cold to me, but whatever, my carpets were clean. And then a month and a half later, I get a request for a review for their service. And I'm sitting there looking at the computer, I'm like, what? I'm looking at the carpet, and while I'm talking, my dog's taking a piss in the corner. And so my carpets already are filthy and dirty as it is. So I'm like, I'm not even excited about my carpets being cleaned anymore. No, I'm not gonna leave you a review. So I wasn't, it wasn't that I wasn't happy with the service, it just time, too much time passed. There was no, no reason for me to leave the review that time. There's a special cadence that goes into asking for reviews. I know we had a question about delivering the experience. And delivering the experience is creating that service that's untouchable, that customer service that everyone, that everyone thrives to give and everyone loves to have. So first you need to deliver that experience. That's most important. And then you instantly, instantly gauge sentiment. Gauging sentiment is pretty simple. You ask, were you satisfied with the service, yes or no? This allows you to cause, to stop any bad reviews from coming in. A lot of the programs are out there, a nice job, and podium, they do this, they gauge sentiment. So you gauge sentiment, were you happy, yes or no? If they're happy, you wait a day, you send the initial text. Why a text? Come on, guys. You answer the phone. It's more personal, that was the answer I was looking for. It's more personal. A text is more personal. We text blasted you guys to get you this event, and you guys responded, right? Exactly. Text is a good way to market. It's a good way to get people to do something. After that, you want to wait about a week if you don't hear anything back. Then you want to send the first email. That first email, be very personal. Be very formal. Don't get, don't get too crazy with it. Hey, just reaching out. Um, we build our business based on referrals. I want to make sure you guys can leave us that review. That'd be awesome. We really appreciate it. After that, you want to wait about a week if you don't hear back from that. Then you want to do one more follow-up email. Follow-up email is a little more urgent. Hey, I know we talked about you leaving a review. Can you do me a huge favor and leave that review as soon as you possibly can? We really build our business based on referrals. We really appreciate you as a customer. If you can do this for us, it'd be great. Thank you very much. Leave it at that. Wait one more week, the final week, and you want to do the final reminder. The final reminder is, hey, I really need that review. I really, really appreciate you guys can leave us that review. I know you said you would do it. I know you're busy. If you take two seconds out of your day, that'd be awesome. If they don't, guys, at that point, it's okay. You guys can still be friends. <laughs> you're, they're good customers. But this is the cadence. Take a picture of this. This is the cadence that will work for you. This is the sending requests constantly. They're following up. They're reaching out. This is going to help you land more reviews. Everyone good? Should I incentivize? Oh man. The answer, no. You don't need to incentivize. What did we look at before? 75% of your customers are willing to leave you a review. You don't need to pay them to leave you a review. I was at a Tulsa meetup. We have our meetups that are across the country. I was talking to one of our pros there and he was telling me, Chad, I got, I got five stars over 300 reviews. So I said, awesome. How'd you do it? He goes, oh, I got secret sauce, I can't tell you. I'm like, you can tell me, I wanna know. Like, what's your secret? He goes, well, I give gift cards for reviews. In my head, I'm like, oh, here we go, here we go. He starts telling me about the process, and he goes, well, come to think of it, I had an issue recently. I'm like, oh, here we go, bingo. He told me he gave the gift card to 
to his customer. His customer went online, left the review, and the customer in his review was, John's carpet cleaning business was fantastic, did a great job. I even got a $5 gift card for leaving this review. Aww. Now, what do you think happened then? Other customers saw, potential customers saw, it became a, just a train wreck. People were responding, oh, where's my, where's my gift card? Where's my, I'm like, oh God. I said, so what, do, what are you gonna do? You're moving forward, you can keep going, this going? He goes, I can't, there's no way. I'm like, good call. There's no need to incentivize, guys, there's no need. 75% of your customers are willing to leave you a review. You do not need to pay for it. 30% think online reviews are fake if there's no negative reviews. How many of you guys have negative reviews? I think everybody should raise your hand. How many of you guys have negative reviews? Let me ask again. No one's perfect here. And guess what? Your customers don't want to see perfect. They want to see some blemishes but they will respond to how you handle it. And we'll get into that. Frozen again, so how to respond. First, you almost always want to respond, and I'm gonna rephrase that, always respond. Respond to good and positive reviews. People wanna see that, they wanna see genuine. Don't make a cookie cutter response. Every response, you just take your time and respond to it appropriately. Be concise. There's no need to tell a story here. Keep it simple, break it down small. Thank them, appreciate them. If it's negative, keep it simple. Say, we apologize for any inconvenience we might have caused you, which is not how our business is run. We'll reach out to you personally and try to figure it out. It's a good solution there. Don't act impulsively. I'm looking at this few of you in here. <laughs> I can tell some of you guys act impulsively. Don't act impulsively. If you're pissed off, guess what? Walk away for five minutes, take a breather, Go bitch to someone else <laughs> about, about those reviews. Take a breath, wait about 12 hours and get back and, and reach out and figure out how you can handle it. But do not act impulsively. It will do no good for you. Don't wait too long. 24 hours or less, you should wait to respond to a review. Customers wanna see that response. They took the time to leave you a review, take the time to respond. Think ahead. Be 10 steps ahead of your customer. If you know there's, a, there's an issue coming, or you maybe when your text had a bad day or the service wasn't great, think ahead. Be prepared for that negative review. Think about what they're gonna respond to. And last but not least, my most important one is be genuine. You guys care, how many of you guys care about your customers? Raise your hand. I see every single hand raised here. Be genuine. Your customers wanna see that. It feels good to do it but care about your customers, they love that. Why is it so important? If I can pull this slide. 78% of customers think a review response equals you care for your customers. I'd say even more than that. But 78% think if you respond, you care. And guess what, that's true, 100%. If you respond, you care about your customers. You care about your reputation, but you also care about your customers. and ask everyone. Make sure to ask everybody for reviews, because guess what? How many, what percentage of customers are willing to leave you a review? Oh, okay, you guys got it, you picked it up. Here's some pro tips. Number one, focus on Google for ranking. Google is king. Google rules, rules the world, I'm sorry to say, it rules the world. Focus on Google first. That's your one, number one priority, get reviews on Google. Then you wanna focus on Facebook for presence, especially that's, that's huge. How many of you guys are on Facebook? We have what, 5,000 people in our house call pro group right now? That's fantastic, I know you guys are on Facebook. People look at your pages. It's another touch point for them. They're searching for you, they're looking for you. Facebook allows banning of trolls. Trolls, you know, the guy who sits in his mom's basement complaining about your business because he has nothing else to do? Yeah, that's a troll. Facebook allows for banning of that. Consumers expect less than a day reply. Less than 24 hours, you should be responding to every single review. Avoid the negative cascade effect. I'll keep it simple. Don't get in a pissing match with your customer. It's not gonna do you any good, I promise. And this one's a, an important one. Replies to a negative review should not mention your business. 
Do not say your business's name in those negative review replies. Positive reviews, mention your business all day. Google will associate a negative review and knock you down a peg if you, if you mention your business in a reply. So don't do that. For a positive review, mention your business, go crazy. We are very excited, House Call Pro, to announce we've launched our review platform, um, which has been great. we have really excited about it. About 40% of our customers have already jumped onto it. It's really been, really been awesome. I'm sure we'll have some questions about it. But it's free to you guys, which is, which is great. And how it works is first you get that Google My Business. So you're sending that request over to your customer. If the customer is a Gmail account, then those reviews will go to Google. So if your customer is a Gmail account, those reviews will go to Google. I had a lot of questions on that. Second, if it doesn't go to Google, it checks to see they have a Facebook profile. If they have a Facebook profile, it goes to Facebook, allows them to leave those reviews, which is awesome. And then not after Facebook, it goes to House Call Pro. We're working right now on getting those pushed out to your website. That's gonna be worked in the next like, month or two. That's something we're definitely working on. But you don't lose those reviews, they're there. They're just hanging out on the dashboard. And it's really good to have this. It's good for internal, you know, what's going on in my business, how your text doing. You can look by text, employees, customers, all these things. So you should be checking your reviews consistently. We're, what was that? This is in the House Call Pro app. So when you guys, when you guys want to, if you guys want to launch it, which is free, you go into your app section, just open it up, launch it, and it'll be good to go. My favorite slide. Your brand is not what you say it is, it's what others say it is. Write that down. Your brand is not what you say it is, it's what others say it is. Guys, thank you very much.